All right, everybody. So I know it's Sunday, it's the end of the conference, we're all tired, but bear with me, this should be a fun talk. At least it was for me. Uh, so uh, we are going to talk about Tango with Systemd, and the reason for this title is that, in, as in every dance, such as Tango or any other, first you have to learn the moves to dance, and at first you kind of step on each other's toe, you fumble, and it's not going to go great. Uh, then you learn, and then, then it's great, and you kind of look like this. Uh, let's first address the font of this slide. It's Comic Sans, I know. Deal with it. So first, we have to go, a, we have to go back a little bit. Um, the project I'm going to talk about starts in 2013, and we chose to use System D back then, which was the version uh, 207. So uh, all of the features that I'm going to talk about are a little bit dated. But as I go along with the slides, we updated our version of System D, even if we uh, kept doing uh, the same mistakes. At the time, System D was not really popular. Uh, there was still a lot of troll, a lot of heat in the community. Uh, I'm sure many of you remember that. Uh, was not really a, a really great time. Um, and especially, you did not speak about System D on embedded devices. Uh, you used PZBox or System V, but not System D. It was huge. It was a lot of tools. It was unmaintainable. It was horrible. But yet we chose to use it. Was it madness? Maybe at the time. Today, uh, not so much. So that's my pretty face. You can see. That's my name. Complicated. My mail. Much easier to remember. I work at this company, which is called De Vialet. It's a French company. We make this product. It's a hi-fi speaker with a lot of um, connected services, Spotify, Airplay, Bluetooth, you name it. So it runs Linux and Systemd. Let's tango. First, so first dance. So as I said, we started with Systemd 207. Um, so some of the features that I'm going to talk about um, were not implemented or um, not as useful as they are today. First, journal D. So even back then, it's the way to store your log. It's, um, it's, the, w it's the way to keep you all your logs with system D. But we did not use it. Worse, we really went against it. For example, in order to make it boot after a mount point, a read, read write was created on our systems, we hacked the service. And I do not mean we hacked it using a drop-ins like you should do. We hacked it like a patch in the code of system D. And uh, as this uh, system is a very basic one, it basically slowed our whole boot by order of seconds. We did not use the API either. Uh, in fact, we didn't even knew there was one. We even designed our own logger because we thought, why not? Time sync D, another great tool we could have used, but why use something embedded with your own init system if you can use something else, right? So we used OpenNTPD. OpenNTPD is a very good piece of software. I'm not saying that it's not good. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about at all. But it has a few drawbacks, especially on an embedded device. Uh, when you don't have interfaces available for some reasons, uh, OpenNTPD will take a lot of time before trying to sync again. And when your user is trying to listen to music to his online music services, you, won't, um, you don't want him to wait for 10 minutes so OpenNTPD um, resync again. So we patched OpenNTPD. Your product starts, you don't have a DNS. Again, OpenTPD takes a lot of time before it syncs again. Again, add a patch, fix the problems. You don't have, we don't have a, an RTC in our, um, in our product. So we created a small uh, script shell, which basically is a daemon that 
every five seconds will touch a file in the system in some read-write partition. Ring a bell? Again, network D. Um, so network D was introduced in mid-October 2013. At the time, it wasn't really useful for us. So we did not use it. We rolled our own. Uh, as I said in the beginning of the talk, remember that uh, as time goes by, we keep update our system D. Uh, I don't remember what uh, version we were using at this time, but I'm pretty sure network D was more useful than when it was just introduced. But still, we did not use it. We rolled our own again. And to try to detect the interfaces at boot, you had to use a shell script, which basically was a while loop, which was looking for sysclassnet, insert the name of my interface here for all the interfaces that we used. And once all the interfaces were detected by this script shell, our network manager could run. Because it was not dynamic. The interfaces, uh, if one interface was not available, it would crash, and then you were kind of screwed. You basically had to restart the whole process. So, and yeah, the name of the interfaces were hard coded in the program. And so it was a lot of line of code. I think I looked at it before, it was a 10K line of code. Because, well, you have to handle WPS applicants, host APD, if config, root, DHCP, server, clients, uh, MDNS, whatever. So basically, that's us trying to use systemd. We tried, but kind of missed the mark. So what we did is that we took systemd and we really beat him up until we shaped him into something that worked as we expected, not as you should work with it. So it was not a great experience of, at first, but honestly it was our fault because we didn't really try to understand how it worked. To put this in some context, the whole project, the whole product, and by the product I mean there's the product, the uh, test software, the manufacturing software, and everything that goes with the product was all done by a team of five people. So we didn't really add the time. Also, I did not speak of this, but why have why only one in it when you can have two? Two is better than one, right? Um, what do I mean by two in its systems? Basically, we had uh, systemd run all our services, and at the end of the boot, it would run another program, another daemon, which from various inputs from users would start, stop uh, some services or some target, which is exactly what systemd do. And because to start services or targets, you have to be root, but you don't want your daemon to be root because it's a security issue. And then we created some root launchers. What is a root launcher? Basically, it's a small program uh, that only takes a few arguments and only allow you to start a um, specific binary with specific arguments. And it's uh, set with set UID. Not so great. And because of all, all the things that I talked about, our boot was almost sequential, so we did not take any advantage of the parallel capabilities of systemd. Uh, there was a lot of contention, so a really slow boot, a lot of code from uh, that has to be maintained by us, tested, debugged, and many, 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 many more errors. I, it would last all day if I would list them all. Here is a, an idea of the boot chart that we had on our product. As you can see, there is a few really big red lines. That's not, not really great. 
Then we had some epiphany. Yeah. Much better the second time around, especially when you have time. So, journal D. Yes, you should use it. There's an API for that. You can store blob. There is compression. It's easy to add context. You can have some fields. Uh, it's really easy to insert into your daemon. I mean, just use it. It's easy. So, as I said, binary log formats, great. It's great to compress. It's uh, easy to send to a remote server. Um, nice to use. It also owns all the quorums, which is kind of nice. Uh, we don't really use it uh, because we have some very specific needs regarding the, the, the quorum. And so we have a, a small script shell, but it's only 20 lines, so not so bad. And also, you have to learn to use the command line. Um, I would say that journal CTL command line and many systemd tools, to me, kind of remind me of Git. When you first start, <sighs> really hard to understand. Once you get the hang of it, it's great. You can do great thing with it. Time seeing D. You should use it too. It's nice. It works along with network D, which is which is really great because when you lose an interface or it's disconnects, reconnects, um, you won't lose track of the time. It will try to resync when the new interface arrives. When there is if there is a route to internet or anything, nice. Maintains a clock file for you as a fake, uh, as a fake RTC. Nice. We can get rid of this ugly shell script. It works even if you don't have uh, DNS. We there's mm, there's this bug with etc resolve conf that if it's empty and your daemon is starting and um, it uses the libc, basically the libc will never reopen etc resolve conf, even if it changes. So you're kind of stuck. Um, that's also one of the reasons that we used systemd resolve D. I'm not talking about this here, but uh, it's also a really great tool, even for embedded devices. And yeah, um, work with DNS because if um, it's hard coding the source that you can use the Google DNS, you can change it at compile time if you want. If you don't want to use Google DNS, it's also pretty fast because instead of implementing the whole NTP protocol, it will only implement the SNMP protocol, SNTP, sorry, protocol. Network D. So actually, we are using uh, version 234. So we are pretty up to date. Looking forward to use 2.35. Uh, again, good tool. Dynamically detect interfaces much better than what we had. Um, using network files or link file, you can set up whatever you want on your interfaces, MTU, uh, the MAC addresses, you name it. It's really good for simple network like you could have on your laptop or even maybe your server. And even not so simple network like you can have on such a product because as I showed you, we create a speaker, but you can have many speakers in a room. So it's a distributed system that runs. So the network configuration can be kind of tricky. One of the drawbacks is that there is no Wi-Fi AP support as far as I know. So we still had to wrote some code to handle WPA supplicant and host APD. So in conclusion, I would say that this time around, we have seen some real, uh, some real gain from the boot time because finally it was parallelized. We removed most of our crappy code. And so now we have uh, maintained and a taste tested code base and something that is documented um, that we can contribute to. Um, it's much better for everyone. And also, um, it's not our job to make an end system. Our job is to make software that creates feature for our users. 
So if we can use systemd, great. Drop-ins, they are one of the features that we really, really overlooked, uh, which are really awesome for us, because it's, it enables us to create our system in, in the manner as of an OEM, if you would. Because if we were to, say, license our system, it's easy to do. We can just give our, our, our kind of distro uh, to a vendor, and it would just have to put some files into the directory that it, it wants, some drop-ins of its own. So to troubleshoot, there is a lot of, a lot of tool uh, added by systemd. Um, there is the um, systemd delta, there is uh, the cat, which is pretty useful, uh, analyze, really useful too, and many more. The bus interface also, use it, it's good. Finally, we can have a stateless system. Instead of having a system which would evolve over time, which is not really what you want in an embedded system, each time your users boot your product, you want it in a pristine state so that you know that it is what you designed, not something that rots over time or you don't really know what state it's in. Also, I've heard a lot of time that systemd was really huge, and so you cannot really use it on embedded devices. Um, maybe it's true if you have a really, really tiny storage um, requirements, but nowadays it's getting pretty rare. If you're using EMMC or whatever, they are pretty, pretty large. Also, you have to remember that even if uh, system, system V is maybe small, but there's a lot of dependencies on a lot of uh, tools. And you can really, really chop systemd down with a lot of uh, compile flags. Just have to look them up. Uh, to build our distro, we are using buildroot, and it exposes us a lot of flags to disable a lot of features in systemd, so you can easily get to a systemd that I think the whole systemd package and so all of the tools are around five megabytes, so not so bad. Uh, great support for read-only root file system. There's the watchdogs also that are great. Uh, TMP files, instead of doing some overlay hacks that we did, what we did in the first version of our system is that we would uh, rsync files over the rootfs once it was created uh, in order to replace some services or some configuration file. Not good. Do not do this at home. Uh, TMP files, great. We also are using dynamic users, uh, also a great feature. Um, previously, we had many, many users that were not really used or they were used only once and then not dropped because they were in the system. Uh, with dynamic users, you can avoid that. A lot of security capabilities that we now use, protect system, protect home. Uh, you can define capabilities for your daemon. So you can use uh, C groups, you can define RT Prio. And one thing that is really great, you don't even need to modify files that are in slash lib slash systemd. You can put them in run. So, in the end, systemd really was the right choice for us because it um, allowed us to really focus on the features that our user wanted and not something that is not our job. Uh, we gained a lot in boot time, we gained in security because of all the security features that are available in systemd and really easy to implement. Uh, it's easier for us to manage a single firmware for multiple products because I only show you one product, but we have others, uh, because you can use some uh, drop-ins or um, to overwrite things. You don't have to do some ugly patches. Um, and there is many, 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 many more features available in systemd that surely we don't know about yet. Uh, now, 
we try when we need uh, we need something from systemd now we really try to uh, look it up in the manual or in some forum irc or anything because usually it already exists and also i have kind of uh, an habit to read the news file now uh, there's a lot of gems that are available in there that are not um, uh, widely uh, discussed, so you maybe won't know them if you don't look. So yeah, we use systemd now for what it's good at, uh, which is booting and managing the system, and we do what we are good at, which is audio speakers. And I don't know why it doesn't work. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, if you have any question? Nope. Nobody? Ah, here's one. Uh, do you have the time and diagram for booting with system D like, on the second dance? Um, I did not took it. I can give you an estimated time. Uh, first version was around 40 seconds. And right now we are at uh, 18. Pretty cool. <laughs> and still we haven't really, there is a lot of stuff that we can do to optimize. So I'm fairly confident that we could go way quicker. Anything else? Nope, no one? Really? You're sleeping? Wake up. All right, that's all for me, thank you.